Again, Brucham Aboyim, thank you very much for attending and welcome to our home. So this will be the uh, another lecture on my thoughts. As we know, um, next Wednesday night will be the first Seder. And uh, again, so that, as I mentioned before, we will not have class next week and the following week, and then the following week I'll be coming back from vacation. So I thought it would be only apropos to deal with a topic on the Haggadah, on the uh, book that we read at the Passover Seder, and something that, again, that we, I think most people know about, the four sons that are mentioned in the story of the Haggadah. So let us begin. This week on My Thoughts, I'd like to examine the four sons that are featured in the Pesach Haggadah. The question becomes, why are there four sons mentioned? And what is so special about the number four in connection with the Haggadah? Well, during our recitation of the Haggadah, we drink four cups of wine. There are four questions that are asked by the children. We make mention of the four exiles, in addition to the four sons. In the segment that introduces the four sons, it begins with the Hebrew word Baruch, which, is, which, is, which means blessed is. This word is mentioned four times in the opening paragraph. Why four times? This is to inform us that every child, every child is blessed and unique in their own way. By mentioning four different sons, we offer our thanks to God Almighty for giving us even those sons who may not be as righteous as we may have hoped for. Nonetheless, they are all descendants of the forefathers, and their souls are essentially pure, which always allows for the possibility of teshuva, of repentance. In the same opening paragraph, we find the Hebrew word echad, one, repeated four times. This word tells us that each and every Jew is unique and is expected to serve God Almighty with their own special talents. In addition, there resides within each and every Jew the spark of Echad, the one and only God who created this world. Now, the gematria, the numerical value of the Hebrew word Echad is 13, which is the same gematria, the same numerical value as the Hebrew word Ahava, meaning love. This is an allusion to the fact that no matter what level the Jew may occupy at the moment, there always exists deep within his heart a love for God Almighty, his Father in heaven. Now, since the Hebrew word Achot is mentioned four times in the verse, we can also see an allusion to both Eliyahu HaNavi, Elijah the prophet, and the Hebrew word Ben, meaning child. If you multiply four times 13, it equals 52, which is the gematria, the numerical value of the name Eliyahu. This is an allusion to the future redemption, which our sages tell us will be heralded in by the prophet Elijah. The connection to the Hebrew word ben, child, is an allusion to the fact that within each and every one of us, there exists a composite of the traits represented by each of these four sons. So within each of us, at times, there can be found a wise son, an evil son, a simple son, and a son that doesn't know how to ask. How is it that we know which son makes each one of the statements recorded in the Haggadah? Well, we recognize them from their opening words. As it says, Ma hu Omer. What does he say? People know who you are by virtue of what you say to them. So we know about the first three sons by context of what their question is. However, the fourth son, well, he says nothing. So we really don't know where his religiosity stands. The name Haggadah is connected to this son, the son that doesn't know how to ask. The verse in the Torah that commands us to recite the Haggadah is based on the words in the Torah, written in the portion of Bo, that state, V'higadata levincha bayomahu, and you shall tell your child on that day. You know, one would have thought that the Torah would have used the Hebrew word be Amarta el Bintra, when you say to your child, or the Tomer el Bintra, when you speak to your child. Both words mean to say or to speak. However, see, these two words allude to different approaches when speaking to another person. 
Amar, say is, is a gentle term, and Daber, speak, is meant to be a stronger response. Since we are concerned about making connection to the child who is saying nothing, we are not certain as really how to approach him. The word of God is taken from the verse in the Torah in the portion of Yitro. When God Almighty tells Moshe, Betagid levnei Yisrael, and you shall speak to the children of Israel. Rashi commenting on this verse states that Tagid is a soft expression. And the fact that the word is spelled Mole, meaning full, meaning with an extra Yud, is an allusion to the word Kigidim, meaning like sinews, which alludes to a very strong response. So here we see an allusion to that son, the son that doesn't know how to ask. Since he says nothing, we can not be certain as to whether he is just bashful or he just doesn't care. So the Torah uses the Hebrew word Haggadah and we are able to address him on whatever level he resides at the moment. The gematria, the numerical value of the Hebrew word Haggadah is 17. And 17 is the gematria, the numerical value of both the Hebrew words Tov, good, and the Hebrew word Chet, sin which fit perfectly with the son who doesn't know how to ask, since we're not sure as to where his head is really at. I believe that we can look at these four sons as four facets of our personalities. Again, within each of us resides a wise son, a wicked son, a simple son, and a son who finds it difficult to ask. I mentioned before that the gematria, the numerical value of the Hebrew word ben, son, is 52. If you multiply 4 times 52, it equals 208, which is the gematria, the numerical value of the name Yitzchak, the Av, the father whom the Talmud in the tractate of Shabbat refers to as the true Av, the true father of Israel. The Talmud in the tractate of Shabbat states that God Almighty complains to Abram Avinu, Abraham our father, Yaakov Avinu, Jacob our father, and even Moshe that their children had sinned grievously and that he needed to destroy them. Well, they all replied that if the people deserve to be destroyed, then destroy them for the sake of your great name. God then goes to Yitzchak of Vino, Isaac, our father, and tells him the same information. Well, Yitzchak's reply to God is, my children and not yours. He concludes his words with the statement, I too had a wayward son and I loved him. You should do the same. Yitzhak recognized the great inner spiritual potential in his wayward son, Esau, even though the dominant influence of his exterior was physically motivated. His efforts were not in vain. Some of our greatest personalities in Judaism were descendants of Esau. They are to include Reb Meir, Reb Akiva, Unculus, and Shemaya the Aptalian. The list goes on. All of these righteous converts were due to all the wisdom and efforts that Yitzchak Avinu, Isaac our father, invested in his wayward son. The first of the sons mentioned in the Haggadah is the Chacham, the wise son. He is called wise, he is not called a tzaddik, righteous. He is an intelligent individual and he is trying to use his intellect to serve God on a higher level. That being the case, he is asking questions so as to be able to grow spiritually. This is this is this pardon, this is cute. The son that connects to Abram Avinu, to Abraham our father, who was able to find God in the world through his intellect. Now the word Chacham has a gematria, a numerical value of sixty-eight. In the first of the 13 requests that we recite three times daily in our weekday Amida, we ask God to give us Chachma, Bina, and Das, wisdom, intellect, and understanding. This paragraph contains 67 letters. If you include the paragraph itself as one, it then equals 68. 68 is also the gematria, the numerical value of the Hebrew word Chaim, life. The only way for a person to live a full, and productive life 
is by taking full advantage of their intellectual capabilities. The second son is the Russia, the evil son. I believe that this son is treated harshly by the Haggadah. He's asking a question, isn't that what the holiday is all about? The fact that you might not like his question is not the point. What is important is that he is, an he is in attendance. He is asking a question that is asked by many religious Jews. What is the purpose of the service that you are performing? He uses the Hebrew word lachem, which means to you. Now, the letters of this word can be rearranged to spell the Hebrew word melech, king. So his question is, who made you a king over us? He is asking the age-old question in reference to the rabbis and their ability to institute rabbinic law. The Haggadah answers this question with the statements such as, Hake is shina, blunt his teeth, or we say to him, leave lo lo, for me and not for him. But why? He is sitting at the Seder table, and he is asking him a question. I believe that rather than blunt his teeth, show him your teeth, smile at him, bring down the temperature, and have an amiable discussion. After all, the acronym of the Hebrew word, Rasha, Reisham, Shin, Aleph, Ayin, pardon me, is Ribboni Shaloylam, the master of the world. In addition, the first and last letter of the word Rasha, evil, spelled the Hebrew word Ra, again, evil. But the middle letter is a Shin. We find this letter embossed on our tefillin of the head. Also, in the Atbash, where we move the first letter for the last letter and so on. Again, there's 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, 11 it can be changed for the others. The gematria, the numerical value of the name of God of mercy of the yud ke vav -ke, which is 26, in the Atbash becomes 300, which is, the, which is the numerical value of the letter Shin. So we see that at his core, he is connected to the God of mercy. And this is what Yitzchak Avinu, Isaac our father, saw in his son Asa. I'm afraid that if we follow the advice suggested in the Haggadah, then the evil son will become the fifth son, the son who most troubled the Rebbe, since he is not even present at the Seder table. The next son, the third son, is the Tom, the simple son. He's asking a simple question. His question is mazot. What is all of this about? We answer him, Gyad, with a strong hand, God took us out of Egypt. But we know that the Torah refers to Yaakov Avinu, Jacob our father, as an Ishtam, a perfect man. So the word time can mean simple, or it can also mean perfect. So if Yaakov is the Tom, then his question cannot be that simple. He must be asking something which is much deeper. So his question may well center around the words that we recite in the high holiday prayers. In the Musaf Amida, in the Musaf standing prayer, we say the words, Teshuvah, Tefillah, Utsadaka, Ma'avirin et Roat Hagazera. That repentance, prayer, and charity remove the severity of the decree. So Yaakov's question is, Mazot. How can you prove to me that this statement of tshuva, tefillin, and sadaka, that they, that they remove the severity of the decree, how, did, how can you prove that statement is true? Now, if you look at these three words in the holiday prayer book, you will notice something unusual. Above these three words in smaller print are three words. Tzom, meaning fasting, kol, voice or prayer, and mamon, money. If you look at the gematria, the numerical value of these three words, each of them has a gematria of 136. Now, if you multiply three times 136, it's 408. 408 is the gematria, the numerical value of the Hebrew word zot, this. So we answer him that in Egypt, the Jews were persecuted by their Egyptian taskmasters. That, that, they were, pardon me, persecuted by their Egyptian taskmasters. That connects with the word tzom, fasting. They lifted their voices up to God Almighty, and the Torah tells us, God heard their kol, their voices. So we had tzom and kol. We also read the Torah in the portion of both where God told Moshe to daber ba'oznei ha'am, speak into the ears of the people. 
a request by God that they accept the gifts from their Egyptian neighbors when they left Egypt. So this situation was unique in that the mitzvah here of tzedakah, charity, was not to give money, to accept the money from their Egyptian neighbors. Again, the third term, mamon. So the Tom, the Yaakov's question is now answered. Yes, we have witnessed that in Egypt, the children of Israel performed tshuva, tefillah, and tzedakah, and that they were redeemed by God Almighty, b'chozek yad, with a strong hand that took them out of the servitude in Egypt. Now the last of the four sons is the She'ena de Elisho, the son who doesn't know how to ask. And he may well connect to both Moshe and or Yosef. You know, on the holiday of Sukkot, we are visited by seven of our ancestors as we sit in our sukkah. Each night, one of these seven lead the group on the fourth night, some say the leader is Moshe, and others say that the leader on the fourth night is Yosef. Now, they both have something in common with each other, and in addition with the son who doesn't know how to ask. Our sages tell us that Moshe had a speech de de a defect. This would have made it difficult for him to speak. Yosef was both a slave and a prisoner for 13 years, a position of subservience where one would not have the permission to speak up. Now both of them would then connect to this fourth son. So we can trace an allusion to our forefathers and to two of the greatest of our ancestors and these four sons mentioned in the Pesach Haggadah. The question that I would like to end this lecture with is, how old are these four sons? I've read where they represent two family generations. The Chacham is the grandfather. The Rasha is the father and the Tam is the son. The son, ta, the Tam, has a religious question. And so he asks his father, the Rasha, who does not know nor does he care about religion. He tells his son, go ask your grandfather, the Chacham. When the grandfather dies, now the Rasha becomes the grandfather and the Tam becomes the father. When the son has a question, his father is a simple person without answers. His grandfather is a Russia who doesn't know and doesn't care. And so he is a She'ena Ladea Lisho, which means he has no one to answer his questions. This then is the epitaph of our generation. Hitler Yamak Shemal understood it perfectly. He tried to wipe out all of our grandfathers. And between Hitler and all the pogroms that our nation has been forced to endure, we have lost many of our grandfathers. It's now become our job, our responsibility, to become the grandfathers to our generation so that our children have someone who can answer, answer their questions in the hope that it helps them to live their lives in a way that brings them closer to their Father in Heaven. And with that, let us help to usher in the coming of Mashiach Sukkain quickly and in our time. Again, let me thank you for attending. Um, for those who have listened to my Torah lectures, that are usually the second part of this series here. Um, we finished altogether 503 lectures from the beginning of Bereshit all the way through to Zosab Racha. Hopefully, we'll be putting all 503 on Spotify. Uh, but they are on my uh, website, again, on base-mordechai.com and under the first heading of the uh, Torah lectures. By the way, in the second category on my website, you'll find other lectures. And if you scroll on that, it has 15 lectures on the Passover Haggadah, again, which you might find interesting. Again, let me thank you all for attending. It's my honor and privilege to be able to teach you. Uh, may God bless you all. Again, with the Chag Kosh Sameach, you should have a great Passover. God should bless you with everything that is good. You should be safe, be healthy, be happy. Again, this is, as I mentioned, the year 2023, the year that Avram Bina was told by God, Lechlecha, that he should go. <clears throat> and where did he go? He went to the land of Israel. And we know that on the night, the night of Pesach, that God took the Jews on the uh, wings of eagles. Back then it didn't make much sense, but right now it makes a lot of sense then. That's an airplane. 
and that HaKadosh Baruch should bless us all, that we should all travel to Israel on the wings of El El. And there we should spend time with Mashiach. And again, the world should be a place of shalom, of peace for all of the world. God bless again, and thank you. Be much and all you do. Take, thank you.